those of us who are you know, at least striving to, to walk the path of righteousness, we should not be surprised when enemies arise. And I mean enemies that you can see and enemies that we can't see. I don't mean human beings who are hidden. I mean the, the dark spiritual powers. So the Psalms, I think, awaken us to this uh, rather stark and harsh reality. Just about a month ago, I had the privilege of recording in connection with the Catholic Hallo app, this new app, uh, all 150 psalms. I went to a little room here in our studio, and uh, over the course of, I don't know, four or five sittings, I read the psalms. And though, you know, for the past, what, 40 years, I've been praying the psalms as part of my Liturgy of the Hours, I would never actually read them aloud one after the other. And it was a very interesting experience. It's always challenging, by the way. I find to read texts out loud like that and to do it just right is tricky. But it was also a very prayerful experience for me. Uh, it caused me to see the Psalms, I think, with, with fresh eyes. Here's a first reflection. I thought a lot about Dietrich von Hildebrand, uh, the great Catholic philosopher from the last century I've talked about a lot recently. Von Hildebrand felt that the Catholic intellectual tradition put a lot of stress on the mind and on the will. So think of Aquinas, you know, and the appreciation of the truth. Think of the will, all of our stress upon moral excellence. But he felt that we had overlooked a lot in our tradition, what he calls the heart. And the heart would be the seat, not of intellection, not of volition, but the seat of, of emotion. Now, again, the church reverences the mind. Think of Aquinas, you know, that when we are in the presence of a great value, we appreciate the truth of it. We certainly see the importance of the will, because in the presence of a value, then we, we seek it as a good. However, von Hildebrand said, in the presence of a value, we also respond with the heart. And that means we respond to the beauty and the splendor of the value. The emotions uh, spill out in response or reaction to the value. Think here of the liturgy. Think of the, the singing and the prayers and the gestures of the liturgy, very much of a heart response to the value of God. So, God, the supreme value. Yes, Aquinas and company understand the truth of God. The great saints participate in the goodness of God. But the heart responds. And it just kept striking me as I read the Psalms. They're, they're so richly emotional. It's the response of the heart of the psalmist to the revealing God. And I think that's something very important now in our religious lives. Maybe we can get too sort of aridly intellectual or maybe too uh, moralistically focused on the will, and we don't allow this emotional response, this value response, and the psalms have that. And relatedly, I thought a lot about my great hero, St. John Henry Newman, whose Episcopal motto was cor ad cor loquitur, heart speaks to heart. I mean, Newman certainly reverenced the mind, God knows, and he certainly reverenced the importance of the moral life. But when it came to his motto, he didn't speak about the mind or the will, but rather of the core, the heart. And cor ad cor, that means God's heart speaking to our hearts core ad core loquitur, well, those are the Psalms. Those are the Psalms, is, is the human heart responding to God's heart. Here's a second uh, uh, meditation. And boy, did this strike me as I read them just one after the other. I think one of the most common words in the Psalms has got to be enemy <laughs> or foe. There's a massive stress on the part of the psalmist on his enemies people that are opposing him, people that want to, to do him in, people who stand against him, people who threaten him. He's, he's deeply aware of his foes, and boy, does he give expression to his, his frustration with his foes, his desire to thwart them, calling God's wrath upon them. I mean, even, even attacking their children. I mean, the psalmist goes to town on his enemies. Now, we could psychoanalyze, I suppose, the, the psalmist. But I think what's much more interesting is to reflect theologically upon this. Basic biblical principle. 
the righteous person will always have enemies. Why? Because we live in a fallen, sinful, and conflictual world. You walk the path of righteousness, and that's the psalmist. Is you know someone who's he's the paradigmatic Israelite, you might say, who's stri- struggling to walk the right path. He will meet ipso facto with opposition, even intense opposition. And the more assuredly he walks the path of righteousness, the more his enemies will rise up against him. Now, who's the perfect example of this but Jesus himself? The ultimate righteous one, walking the path, doing what his father tells him to do. Some respond positively, of course, of course. But look, read the Gospels now. They start sounding like the Psalms. I mean, this ever-increasing struggle, this ever-increasing opposition. And at the end, at the death of Jesus, I mean, he was just surrounded by enemies. His friends had all abandoned him, almost all of them. The psalmist anticipates in many ways, I think, the, the righteous Christ who awakens and faces down enemies, even to the point where they can say he took upon himself the sins of the world. <laughs> the whole world in its dysfunction came upon him. Now, what do we do with this? Well, it's a, it's a bracingly realistic spiritual point. Those of us who are you know, at least striving to, to walk the path of righteousness, we should not be surprised when enemies arise. And I mean enemies that you can see and enemies that we can't see. I don't mean human beings who are hidden. I mean the, the dark spiritual powers. So the Psalms, I think, awaken us to this uh, rather stark and harsh reality. Here's the third and final meditation. Um, the Psalms really give us a sense of the dialogic nature of our religion. Christianity, biblical religion, is not a philosophy. So it's not a, you know, an abstract philosopher musing on, on the nature of things and the nature of ultimate reality. It's not a mythological system where people of great imagination construct uh, stories. Rather, we say it's a revealed religion. God is a person, not an abstract force, who has spoken now again, I'm not talking about voices from clouds, that's a symbol, but that God has personally addressed his people, which calls forth automatically a response from us. If someone speaks to you, what don't you do? Well, I mean, at the very least, it's rude to ignore speech, but no, speech awakens an answering speech in us. Now we're talking about biblical religion. Not abstract speculation, not mythological imagination, but persons speaking. Again, cor ad cor loquitur, the heart of God speaks, and then we speak back. When I read the Psalms, praising God, exulting in God, being angry at God, cursing God when he's doing things that we don't understand, calling God's wrath on our enemies, etc., uh, being being so depressed that you just feel like lying down with the dead, being so lifted up that you feel you could could dance to the ends of the world. I mean, all of that is in the Psalms. God has spoken and we speak back. Now, here's one for for Catholics especially, or those with a higher liturgical tradition. Um, The responsorial psalm at the liturgy. So we've heard the first reading, God has spoken. And the reader says, you know, the word of the Lord. So we know this is not just some human speculation, but this is God speaking to us. Then what do we do? We don't just wait for the next reading. We take the words of the Psalms, don't we? We take the Psalms and then we, now granted, these can be butchered by bad lectors or they can be set to sentimental, treacly melodies and all that. But I mean, at the heart of the responsorial Psalm is our speaking back to the God who's spoken to us. And that's so powerful, it seems to me, in the Psalms as you read them. So can I recommend this? Um, If you feel your spiritual life is getting a little dry or you feel you've maybe wandered from the path a bit, I might recommend to you, open up this great songbook of the church. That's what the Psalms are. People have been singing those quite literally. Think of 
back to biblical times, all the way up through the monastic tradition to the present day. People have been singing the Psalms for, for millennia. Go back into that book. I think you'll find it'll lift up your spiritual life in a fresh way. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to share it and to subscribe to my YouTube channel.